Hi everyone and welcome to this week's video. It's great to see you. I wanted to show you this week around the flower garden because it's the middle of March. The sun has started to come out. We've had some really nice blue sky days, a little bit of warmth in the air and that's really starting to bring things back to life again for the new growing season. And um, The hellebores are looking absolutely stunning at the moment so we're going to have a look at them in a minute. The snowdrops have been beautiful, just starting to come to an end now but we've got narcissi budding up, we've got tulips coming up through the ground. One of the most exciting things I like to see at this time of year is the new growth on the perennials. So I've sowed a lot from seed last year which flowered a little bit for the first time but they're starting to bulk up and I can see them coming back through the soil just now. So things like lupins and Achillea the pearl and mallow and astrantia, all these lovely perennials are starting to put growth on. The greenhouse is really busy. It's packed full of seedlings and sprouted ranunculus and anemones all growing on and will get planted out in the garden soon. I've still got some hardy annuals that I sowed in the autumn time that I'm hardening off and they're going to get planted out next week. Um, lots of seed sowing going on. We've got fresh seed getting sown every few days and then the seedlings are getting potted on. So I've got lots and lots to show you. So let's go and have a look. The first thing I wanted to show you in the flower farm this week was the hellebores because they have just been stunning this year and they're one of my favourite spring flowers. I always think that they're really modest flowers because their um, flower petals are always facing down and you have to kind of pick them up to see their true beauty. Another thing that you can do is that you can use them when they're more mature and flower arranging and you can snip the flower heads off and float them in a bowl of water if you wanted to have a beautiful display as well. I started planting some more hellebores in the gardens over the last few years. When we moved to our home, we had a few established clumps of single varieties in the garden, which were lovely, but I really like the double ones as well. So in the last couple of years, these have been what I've been planting and they're just starting to bulk up a little bit more and getting more flower stems now. So things like double Ellen White, um, double Plum Purple, double Piketty, double Pale Pink. These are all varieties of hellebores that I am growing and they're just beautiful. When they're a little bit more mature, I can um, use them in flower arranging. So they need to have nice mature seed pods for that. Otherwise, they are very prone to wilting. Um, but they do look beautiful in bridal bouquets when we get to late April and May. Rabbits have been a real problem in our garden ever since we moved here and they do like to eat a lot of my shrubs and flowers unless I have fenced off areas and the hellebores are one of the things that the rabbits don't touch which is a really big advantage for me growing them especially in the areas of the garden where we don't have it fenced off so we fence off the flower patches but actually the garden areas we do like to to have um, less formally fenced and so it's nice to be able to grow these there knowing that they'll be untouched touched. Next thing I wanted to show you in the flower farm is the tulips. These are all just starting to come up through the soil now which is really exciting. Last year I had a really bad year with my tulips and I got tulip fire in one of my main beds so I haven't been able to plant any tulips there just now. You can't plant tulips where you've had tulip fire for at least three years and this year I have decided that I will plant some in pots as well as in the flower beds just to reduce that chance of tulip fire and also when they're in pots I can move them in and outside of the greenhouse depending on the weather if I want to bring the tulips on faster or slow them down um, and protect them from any really bad storms for weddings and things. So, so far um, the tulips in the pots are looking really good and it looks like it has been something that might work really well for me every year. So I think I'm going to invest in a few more of these larger pots this year or crates and I will do more of my tulip planting in these in the future but also just spreading out the tulips so that I have some tulips in one bed, some tulips in another bed also helps prevent this risk of tulip fire. And um, this is going to hopefully work better for me. So the mistake last year was to put all of my tulips into the one main bed. And um, then of course we lost um, the lot, which was devastating. So now I've learned from that mistake and I know that planting in different areas, some in beds, some in containers will help mean that I will always have tulips um, of some kind and I won't lose them all to disease if that were to happen again. 
I'm really excited about seeing them this year because I've chosen some really nice varieties. So as soon as they are blooming, I will do a video and show you some of my favorite tulips for flower arranging this year. So here in the flower farm is an area that I've been planting up with the cornflowers that I sowed back in August and September time and I overwintered them in the greenhouse, hardened them off and then in the last two weeks I've started to plant them out. So this is what a hardened off cornflower looks like. Slightly tatty um, but good growth, healthy growth of them, really good root system. And as soon as we get some repeated warm sunny days, these will just really take off and we'll get much earlier flowers. We'll see how early this year we can get them blooming, but it could be as early as late May um, and I'll keep you posted on that. So some of the other hardy annuals that I have planted out are my corn cockles, some poppies and some stalks that you can see here as well. And I don't think it'll be too long before the stalks are blooming. Other things that are coming up in the garden now are things like my iris bulbs that I planted back in the autumn and also my allium bulbs. Sometimes I can get my iris and my alliums to come back for future years, so not just giving me one year of flowers, but I always plant some new extra bulbs as well on top of that just because I'm growing every year and trying to produce more flowers. One of the most exciting things in the garden is going around and seeing what perennials you can see coming back up through the soil after being dormant over the winter time. I love doing this and here you can see some lupins, these are looking really great. The perennial cornflowers are putting on really good growth just now and they are one of my earliest perennials to flower in the garden and I just love their pops of bright blue colour and um, we don't really get pops of blue like that until a bit later on from our annual flowers so it's really nice to see these perennial ones flowering in late May for us. The fever few is looking really really good. I've really grows really well for me here in Scotland and I grow some from seed every year so I've got some that I'm hardening off just now and I'll plant out next week and these are last year's and they're putting on such good growth that I think they're going to have some amazing stems of flowers later this season. The Astrantia is looking really really good, it's just starting to come back again. Astrantia is another perennial that grows really well for me here in Scotland. Aquilegia, I really like growing these as well from seed every year. They grow really well for me. Guillaume's are looking really good and I'm hoping that these are going to produce some nice flowers from some late May weddings that I've got this year. And here we've got some Achelia, also known as Yarrow, and this is another one that grows really well here in the Scottish borders. And I've just started off in the autumn a lot more from seed, so those have been growing really well and they're hardening off now ready to get planted out next week. But the ones that you can see here are my already established ones that have been growing for a couple of years in the garden and still give me good stems of flowers. So peonies are a new venture for me. They make the most amazing cut flowers in May and June here in the Scottish borders. And I had a couple that I planted when we first moved in here, but just as nice plants to have in the garden and to enjoy before I started my business. And last year I decided to invest in quite a few more peonies and plant them in their own bed, which I have some alliums growing in beside them at the moment. And peonies, it'll take a while to get established before I can cut from them. So you're looking from anywhere between three to five years after planting before you can get a good number of stems for cutting. So this is going to be year two for me and it'll be next year before I can think about looking to see if there's enough flower stems to cut for arrangements. So that's going to be an exciting year next year. One of the things that is really not looking very good is my Hesperus and also my Honesty and I sow these every year and um, they put on really good growth in the autumn and they're looking really healthy and then we get to this time of year and they get really nibbled and I'm not sure whether it's slugs and snails that are doing this or whether it is pigeons. These are two of my main culprits in the flower patch. So these are actually so badly nibbled that I'm thinking I might actually dig them up and transfer them into pots and just get them growing back again because I think they will come back but they just need some protection and then I will plant them out again when they're a bit stronger and I'm going to get some bird netting and I'm going to put that over the flower patches just to um, prevent any pigeons and also rabbits if they're the culprits and I'm also going to be going on some slug hunts and snail hunts at night time to double check that they are not being eaten by these. 
So nice to see the first daffodils coming into bud in the garden. And um, we get the daffodils first, followed by the narcissi. And um, these ones are just going to come out next week, I think. We've got some miniature tete a tete also coming out in the garden, which are really pretty. And also, I have some early narcissi which are flowering, which are in crates. So, flower before the ones in the garden. And these are deliciously scented. The muscari are just starting to come through in the garden just now. I plant blue varieties of these and white varieties. I use the white varieties quite often in buttonholes for weddings. Nice to see the crocuses as well. They are really coming out well at the moment. They had a little bit of a battering from some rain earlier but are just starting to come back now in the sunshine. So now that the greenhouse is all cleaned out I can show you around what we have got in here in March. So over on this table here, I have got lots of ranunculus that I have been pre-sprouting. So some of it is potted up into individual pots here and they'll be able to get hardened off and planted out very soon. And I've got some trays here where I have got them pre-sprouting. So over here on the floor of the greenhouse, I have got a lot of my overwintered hardy annuals and perennials. So I've already planted some out that I'd hardened off. So things like the cornflowers and the corn cockles that we'll see in the flower patch, they are already out. And these ones here, I have been hardening off for the last week. So another week of hardening off and they will be ready to get planted out as well. So in a minute, I'm going to take these outside for the day so they can get used to the outdoor conditions and then I'll bring them back in in the evening. So the things I've got here, I've got Nigella, I've got Yarrow, I've got Snapdragons, I've got Larkspur, Feverfew, Gypsophila, Scabious, Stalks, Dorcas, Sweet Peas, Ami Magis. These are all things that I grew back in August, September time and have got through the winter. So these will start flowering for me much earlier in the season than the things I'm sowing just now. Here we've got some anemones that I have also pre-sprouted and potted up. Lots of trays here of pre-sprouted ranunculus. They'll harden these off and I might actually just plant these straight into the garden once they're hardened off rather than doing the stage of potting them on just because we're later in the season now and they should be okay to go in the garden in the next couple of weeks. Over here I have got trays of Orlea. So these have all germinated and I have potted them on. So these were sown on the 29th of January and I've got lots of baby seedling plants now. You can see the true leaves are starting to come out. And I've got lots of other seedlings in the side conservatory that I need to pot on just now and get out here like the Orlea. Over here I've got my seedling cornflowers. These are doing well as well. You can just start to see the true leaves are starting to come here on the little plants. So they're doing well. Got some corn cockle seedlings that are growing away nicely. Over here I've got some larkspur seedlings. These are starting to grow their true leaves as well. Got some good grasses growing here. I've got some Breeze and Media and I've got some Hare's Tail grass. And I'm going to do a video later on this year about growing grasses for flower arranging and how to grow them from seed. Here are some of my January sweet peas. I sowed these back in January and I have just recently pinched them out to promote side branching from further down the plant and that will promote a nice bushy sturdy sweet pea plant rather than one that's too leggy. And I've got a video that I have made on pinching out sweet peas if you want to find out more about how to do this. Over here I have just got some dahlias out from overwintering in these pots and I'm just starting to wake them up just now by giving them a little bit of water this week so we'll wait and see when we can get some little shoots coming up on these. Still early days yet. Over here my overwintered chrysanthemums are just starting to wake up now so they'll put on growth in the next couple of weeks and I will take cuttings from these to produce new plants for this season. So on my heated propagating bench, we've got lots of great seeds that are germinating at the moment. Last week I sowed some scabiosa and these are just starting to germinate now. I've sowed another batch of hare's tail grass which have come through. 
These Puplerium have taken longer to germinate but they're really got away now and they are definitely ready for potting on. Got some Larkspur which has started to germinate so these are all the slower ones that didn't come quite through as quickly as my cornflowers and my corn cockles um, but they're all starting to come through now. Snapdragons are just starting to get their first pair of true leaves and they'll need potting on. They take a wee while to get established to snapdragons so they're one to start earlier just like the Rebecca here as well. The Rebecca are quite a slow grower um, and it takes a while to get them into big enough plants to get outside in the garden so they're another good one to start fairly early on as well. Uh, but they've germinated well and I'm looking forward to seeing the Sahara Rebecca this year which is the first time I've grown this variety. So every week at the moment I just keep on sowing more seeds so that we can have succession of flowers right the way through the summer. And I'll start off with my half hardy annuals and my more tender annuals in the next few weeks. So things like my cosmos and my status and my helichrysum, those will be the ones that I'll get going next. And sunflowers and zinnias will be not long after that, so into April and I'll get those started. We'll do some videos on that later on. Thanks so much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed going around the flower farm with me. Love this time of year. It's always really exciting seeing what is coming through in the garden again. You know it's not going to be too long for flowers coming and it's just so nice to have some blue sky days and some sun on your face and just to be able to get outside and work in the garden without it blowing a hooli or um, having rain pouring down or just so frozen on the ground that you can't work it. So it's exciting times and I can't wait to see the flowers coming back again in April.